wouldn't say I'm addicted, it's just kind of a way of life, I guess. Uh, it just feels right. <laughs> Finishing shoot is amazing and getting to raise your arms when you cross the line is incredible. But uh, it lasts more than even just the few minutes after you cross. It lasts a good little while and you don't want it, you know, that kind of elation and that feeling of accomplishment to end. But uh, eventually you start looking at another goal. <laughs> I didn't do my first Ironman until... I, uh, until uh, 2005, um, so it's nine years ago, but uh, the goal was always just to finish one, and then once you finish one, then it's do it faster and do it, you know, do it better. So that's the same thing with anything, I guess. Like the seconds before the cannon fire is always real tense, really tense. Uh, the nerves are there, but you know what's funny? I, I, all these years, you know, you're always nervous before a race, um, but as soon as the gun goes, it's uh, it's all gone. Um, yet you still have ten hours of racing ahead of you. As the training kind of takes over your life to some respect, uh, I'm training, doing Ironman. I'm training up to I think this this year, 24, 25 hours a week. And then on top of that, you got um, two visits to the chiropractor, a visit for massage and then go to pursuit for recovery, you know, you're up over 30 hours in a week. All comes down to that one day. And then that one day all comes down to that last mile or whatever it is, right? So yeah, of course there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of build up to it. Usually when you're sitting on your bike for that long and you're turning the pedals for that long, you get off the bike and you kind of have like a little equilibrium issue. Uh, you gotta get your you got to get your land legs again, kind of, just as you do when you get out of the water after swimming that long. Um, you got to feel what it's like to have two feet on the ground um, and, you know, you're running, right? You drop off your bike and then you're running. There's no longer four miles in the world than miles 22 to 26. Actually, I would say 24 to 25 because 25 to 26, you're just floating, especially in Hawaii. In Hawaii, after mile 25, I kind of slowed down if I wanted to. For the four miles before that, all I wanted to do was stop. But for that last mile, I wanted it to last the rest of my life. It's just, there's nothing better. The crowd just pulls you in. Yeah, it would have been nice to slow down and soak it up a little bit. But, but, but you can't. But I think everyone kind of feels that at some point. The trick is getting past it. because that's where you lose focus and where you start giving up time and, you know, especially when seconds matter. It's funny to say seconds matter when it's a 10 hour day, but you do. Maybe you just look around for a little bit, you get that second wind and then you say, okay, it's not that far. It's, you know, I've done this many times before. I've, I've, I rode 200K seven times already this year. So what's another 30K right now, you know? And uh, yeah, you just get through it. You got it, that's what the sport is. You know, it's uh, overcoming all these mental barriers and things that you kind of put up on your own. Yeah. You know, no matter how many times during the race I said I never want to do this again, that last 40 seconds of race is all of it, right? And then you're like, oh, I got to do it again, and I got to do it better. 